Well, hey there, my name is Matt Kleskowski, creator of the Photoshop system, and I've got another bonus video for you here. This one's on selections. This is it's actually one of my favorite parts of Photoshop. Um, I spend a huge amount of time um, on this part inside the Photoshop system, and I think it's probably one of the most important parts of Photoshop because selections are one of those things that we really can't do anywhere else. You know, if we're gonna if we're gonna do our work in Lightroom or Camera Raw, one of the main reasons we jump over to Photoshop is because of selections. So this video, about 15 minutes long, it's an overview of your selection tools. It's not not necessarily a deep dive into every selection tool there is, but it's more of an overview to get you to kind of feel a little bit more comfortable about which tool to use for the job. And um, I'm telling you, you're gonna learn a ton of tips from it. If truth be told, I, when I was creating the Photoshop system, I actually had an aha moment about the select and mask dialog box. And I'll share it with you in this video here, but there's just, there's so much when it comes to selections that when you do make that jump to Photoshop, I want you to feel a little bit better about which tool you're gonna go choose. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now, I think the uh, I think the first tool we're gonna come across is gonna be uh, your, your marquee tools, the uh, rectangular marquee or the elliptical marquee tool. These basically let us create a, a rectangle or an ellipse or a circle uh, of a selection. Okay, marquee is just a fancy word for selection. As a photographer, I don't think you're gonna use them that much, but sometimes I, I will, like if I'm gonna be in Lightroom and I wanna make a, a cover for a book and I wanna do it a little bit nicer or maybe a front image for a slideshow, I'll jump over to Photoshop and I'll add some text to it. All right, so I'm just gonna go over here and type in Great Smoky Mountains, all right? Uh, just use my move tool, kind of move it into place. And what's gonna happen with a lot of your text is it, it, it's gonna interfere with the background. Chances are it's never gonna look just perfect no matter where you put it, unless you maybe have a clear sky in the photo. So there's a little technique that we use that can help offset the text from whatever it happens to be over. So I'll use the rectangular marquee tool for this. First thing we would do is add a layer. Uh, a little tip for you here is, you notice I have this type layer selected. Uh, if I go to the new layer icon and I command or control click on it, it'll actually create a new layer right below. Right, if, I, if I normally add a new layer, it goes above, but if I command or control click, it does it below. And then I'm just gonna grab my, uh, my rectangular marquee tool and draw a rectangle. Let's go ahead and fill this with, what do you say? I'm gonna go black, okay? Click okay, deselect, and then all we do is we kind of reduce the opacity. So you can see here, we can still see the photo behind it, but it helps to offset the text a little bit more than uh, just putting that text right on top of the background. So that's an example. Again, as a photographer, I don't think you're gonna use those too many times, but if you do need to make a shape um, in the form of either the rectangle or the ellipse, that would be the place to go. All right, let's go to the next one here, the lasso tool. Lasso tool, I don't use a lot, but I do, if I have some real quick, real quick cleanup that I wanna do, like uh, over here, maybe I wanna start to get, ri uh, get rid of this little tear or rip here. So I just lasso around it, because that's what the lasso tool does. It's not very precise, but it works perfect with content aware fill. So when I come up here to the edit menu and I choose fill, Rather than fill it with a color, I fill it with content aware. And the reason why it works perfect is, is because it's not a perfect selection, it actually gives, gives Photoshop a little leeway to work with and, uh, and figure out what it should put into that area. So again, the lasso tool is not one that I use when I need precise selections, but I, I shouldn't even say that I don't use it a lot because I do because I use content aware fill quite a bit and, uh, and I'll just lasso a real quick selection. All right, from here, let's go to, uh, let's go to another example. Um, right below the lasso tool, we have the polygonal lasso tool. It's actually, if officially it's polygonal, but I just like polygonal better. Um, so the polygonal lasso tool lets you create essentially polygons. Um, the, I think the best way to think of this one, you know, it's very specialized if you have something, you know, architecture where you wanted to maybe go over here and for some reason you select a very specific part of the image and it just draws straight lines. And then when you get back to the beginning, you'll see a little dot there. That means that you're about to close it. So I do have a selection. Now that I have a selection, I could go add an adjustment layer and I could do something to that selection. So if you need to be very, very precise 
in straight lines in the selection, I think the, uh, the polygonal lasso tool works out really well for that, right? Another example would be uh, something like this. I see these, uh, I see in the images like this a lot on like Instagram, but you know, we take a, take a picture of, of you know, ourselves holding a phone or something like that, put it into the scene, and then I'll just go create a selection around there. And then what I'll do, because there's a blurred version of this photo in the background, so what I'll do is I'll copy another version of the photo, just copy it, go into the image, and since I have a selection, if I go up here to the edit menu, if I don't just choose paste, because paste will just paste it over the top, but if I go to paste special and choose the, uh, choose the paste into option, you'll see that it actually puts that image right into that selection. All right, which is pretty cool. And then I can even move it around. I can go, oh, <laughs> I want to make another selection. I can grab my, uh, my move tool and I can move it around inside of there. So this is the fun little effect you can do. But if you have you know, something with very rigid edges, it's not a perfect rectangle or square, then the, uh, the polygonal lasso tool will come in handy. And then right below that is the magnetic lasso tool. You know, 10, 15 years ago, I actually used to use this quite a bit. All right, but we have the quick selection tool now, so we're not going to use this anymore. So essentially forget that this one's there. You know, if you wanted to see what it does, it just, it, it magnetizes to the edges. So I'm not even clicking. I'm not doing anything. You can see it's just magnetizing to the edges, but uh, we have, I think the quick selection tool is going to be better, faster, and easier to use. So we typically don't use that one anymore. All right, moving on to our next photo. So let's go to what I consider like the holy grail. And I'm going to say, I'm just, uh, same thing with the magic wand tool. All right, the magic wand tool used to be a really good selection tool. Um, the quick selection tool has kind of replaced it. It's much faster. It's much easier to use. And when we combine it with what we're about to do in a second here, um, I think you'll see it's pretty powerful. So again, same thing with the magnetic uh, the magic wand tool used to have its place. Uh, it doesn't really have much of a place anymore because I think the quick selection is going to be where it's at. So we take our quick selection tool. An example like this, you know, if we're thinking Lightroom camera raw workflow, right? I could edit this photo. And of course, I've, if I wanted to do something to the foreground and the sky separately, I've got different options. I've got the graduated filter, which is not going to be perfect, especially in a photo like this with the mountains so high and the trees down here so low. And then you've got the brush inside of Camera Raw, but I've never ever touted that brush to be very precise. I would never use it if I wanted to separate these trees, all right? It does good for wide areas, but even with the masking option turned on, it's difficult to get precise with it. So that's typically a job I would say for Photoshop, all right? So when I get into Photoshop, what I can do is make a selection and, uh, and let's say I want to work with, uh, let's say I want to select the sky here. So I'm just going to paint and that's the way the, uh, the, the quick selection tool works. It's essentially a brush. You just paint onto the photo, all right? Now, the quick selection tool by itself is never gonna do the trick. What you're really after is you want to jump into the select and mask dialog box, which is gonna be active up here when you're using a selection tool. So I can go up here to select and mask. Here's where the power is, all right? The first tool is actually the quick selection tool. So if you didn't select it before you got in here, um, then you could go in here and you could select it as well. So either way, it works both the same way. The next tool, this is where a lot of the power is, and over here on the right side is where a lot of the power is. So here's, uh, here's I, I'm gonna share something with you. I don't know that I'm proud about this, but I'm gonna share it anyway. Um, I, I've always, I've always used Radius and Radius has worked for me and I kind of thought I knew what Smart Radius did because I've, I've used Radius and then I've used a Smart Radius along with it and, uh, and I've come to realize that I, I didn't know what Smart Radius did um, as I was actually creating the Photoshop system. So you're going you're gonna to see my aha moment in just a second here. I shouldn't say this. Um, all right, so here's the deal. Radius is automatically going to put a radius around around this edge and try to expand out from whatever you just selected to figure out if there's any other details that Photoshop should, should select here. It's an automatic setting. And the best way to see what it does is to come up here and click on Show Edge. So when I click on Show Edge, you can see it's putting a little radius around what I selected and it's saying, hey, I'm gonna look in here to see if there's any other contrasty details that should probably be part of this selection. The higher you go, the wider that radius gets. 
Now, here's a great example is over here, I want it to be wide because there's a lot of little wispy details with these trees and whatnot. So I want it, I want it to expand quite a, a distance from what I originally select. Over here, I don't, all right? This is a clean edge. I don't want it to get confused if it finds um, little fragments of whatever it could in the sky and, um, and starts to, to mess up this perfect selection of the sky because that's not a hard area to select. This is the hard area to select. So what Smart Radius does is it actually, it goes in there and it detects the edges and it changes up your radius based on what it sees. So when you look at it, check out what it just did. All right, I'm gonna actually make this a little bit bigger. All right, so there we go. Real wide radius all the way around, smart radius. It stays wide around the trees, but then it gets smaller around here. And, uh, and that's, again, I, I've used radius and smart radius. I guess I just thought that smart radius, it cleaned up the edges a little bit better. And I guess in a sense it does, but visually, I never visually thought about it that way. So that was, uh, if, you, if you watched or read one of my emails, I actually said I had an aha moment and, uh, and sadly that was my aha moment. So anyway, um, now the, the radius, it does some good auto stuff. Sometimes it works. Honestly, I'm gonna give you what I do most of the time which is I'm gonna turn off show edge. I go grab this brush and I just paint, All right? I kind of just paint right along the edges here. And I'll usually give it a quick swipe just along the top of the mountain too. But it, it's tough to see. You, you probably didn't really notice anything happening here. So I'm gonna zoom in and when you look at our original, cause I can actually show you the selection we came in here with, that was the before. And that's the after. Look, as I, as I paint, it opens up all these little holes and everything in the trees. It's, it's pretty amazing stuff. It's great technology. It's, I consider it really some of the best selection technology that's out there, but it automatically does all that. So when we're done, I'm just gonna click okay. I have a selection. Um, I actually want the reverse of this because I wanna brighten the foreground. So I would just go to inverse. So now I have a selection of the foreground and now I can add adjustments or do whatever I want to the photo. So, uh, you know, maybe brighten up the foreground a little bit here, like so. Uh, interestingly enough, it, because I have that mask over here, the nice part about it is I can take my brush tool and since I have the mask over here, I can set my foreground color to black on the mask and I probably use a lower opacity, but I think the mountain got a little bit too bright. So I could go over here and maybe darken that up. And you'll never even notice it on the tops of the trees there. It's not worth, it's not worth, it's not like a transition between the tree and the sky. So it'd be okay if that got a little bit darker. I don't think you would ever see it in there. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the quick selection tool to me. That's kind of like the holy grail of selection tools. When you combine that with select and mask, I, I think it's the most powerful selection combination that exists out there. All right, let's take a look here. Now there's another selection tool. This is an old one. I still use it sometimes. I don't use it all the time, but it's under select color range. And what color range does is it, it selects by color range. But here's the thing. If we go inside of here, we can select obviously colors in the photo. So I can select the yellows or um, the greens or anything. I don't really get many options when I do that. So if I wanted to select the yellows, click okay. Um, then I could go in and I could add, you know, adjustment layers. And if I wanted to saturate or desaturate those colors in the photo, that'd be an easy way to do it. And if you're thinking, well, can I go into Lightroom or Camera Raw and use hue saturation and luminance and saturate the yellows? Yes, you can. The difference, and this is, this is why hue and saturation is so, so popular inside of Photoshop. The difference is that it's going to do it to the whole photo and there's no adjustment brush to just do it to part of the photo all right you can't just do it on a specific color to part of the photo but here i get a i get a mask with it all right so now if i wanted to i could go take my mask and if i wanted to boost the yellows over here but not down here i could paint it away from certain parts of the photo and you can see i can change that mask and i can always come over here and double i'm going to make it obvious let's here let's do something really obvious this way and uh, go back over here to my mask. So you can see, as I paint it away, I'm painting it away from parts of the photo. And that I can't do inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw. So that's why hue and saturation is probably, 
for a Lightroom and Camera Raw user, it's probably one of the more popular because we get a lot of control over the colors. Another thing we can do with it is, um, is we can come up here into color range and I can select highlights. All right. So I can select my highlights and I can kind of, I can kind of control how much. All right. So do I want, you know, just the, to me, the highlights down here got, got kind of blah. All right. I'll cancel out of that. Uh, the waterfall looks good. This to me just, it looks almost gray. So if I select the highlights, all right. And then I can control the range of how much I want to select. I usually select too much because I know I can paint it away in a second here. So I'll go OK. And then I'll go over to, let's say, a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. So we'll click on that. And now I can add a little bit of brightness to it. And you see I can bring some more detail and attention to the water down there. And then the nice part about it is, just like before, it's on a mask. So I can take my brush tool. And if I think it brightened things too much, like up here, I can paint it away, all right? Now, again, if you're a Lightroom and Camera Raw user, we do have the adjustment brush. We can paint on highlights. I think where, where this comes in is if you're the kind of person that likes to see it and be a little bit more visual about it because we can paint on our highlights, but we would never be able to see the range of what we just did in that selection dialog box. We'd never be able to see that inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw. So if you, you're the kind of person that kind of likes to see it and be a little bit more detailed and particular about it, then I think this method works really good. All right, one last example here. Uh, let's go take a look. You're gonna like this one. This one's fun too. We're gonna head up to the select menu and there's one last thing here called focus area. So what focus area does is it detects things that are in focus and puts a selection around them. So let's go ahead and click on it. Opens up the dialog box here and you're gonna see it's actually gonna put a selection around these people. All right, now it missed some areas because it's showing us in black what it's missed. So all we got to do is go over here and just kind of scribble on that area here and you'll see it'll add it to the selection. And then you'll also see that it, it's selected too much over here. So if I go into subtract mode, just click on that little icon there, I can actually go back here and just scribble. I don't even have to, to do the whole area. I kind of just scribble inside of it. And, uh, and you'll see it does a real nice job of getting that and removing it. So I think the main thing to understand about focus area is that it'll get you close, all right? Obviously, we've come so far, but we still have so far to go, right? It's got the people selected. Uh, it was really cool that it knew that they were in focus and that background wasn't, but the hair is still a mess. Nice thing about this is it works with select and mask. So we can go right back into that same exact dialog box that we were in before. And now we can use all the cool tools that we have in there. And to me, the best one is really going to be this, uh, this refine edge brush here. All right. So I'm going to hit the left bracket key, make it a little bit smaller. And with the refine edge brush, seriously, guys, all I do when it comes to hair is I just click and paint. It's a brush. So just click and paint. Paint along the edges here. And you're really going to see it come, come to fruition in just a second there. Um, oh, also don't forget down here. So I'm just going to go paint down here. I want to make sure we clean all that up too, but you got to zoom in because it, you have to see what we came in here with. This was the before that's what we came in here with. And all I did was brush along the edge. You know, this isn't shot on a pretty background in a studio or anything like that. This is shot outdoors against a tree and, um, and you can see what a good job it did. And now when I click OK, now I have a selection of the people, but chances are, you know, I want to do something else. I don't want to do anything to the people. I'm actually going to reverse the selection. I'm going to go to select inverse, and now I can run filters on it. Like, let's say I want to blur the background a little bit more. I'll go back over here to field blur. And now I get control over the background because that's what's selected, right? Photoshop is protecting everything else in the photo. So I can blur the background. Um, I still have a selection on the background. If you wanted to, you can maybe darken it a little bit. Just add an adjustment layer. I'll go to the brightness and contrast. Go over here and I can darken it. So I can really pull those people off of the background that they were on. And really Photoshop did all the selection work for me. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for uh, giving me a few minutes of your time, and I hope that gives you kind of a better overview of what selection tools are there. And then just as importantly, you know, when you get over to Photoshop, I hope you feel a little bit better about knowing what selection tool you want to choose to get the job done. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again real soon.